As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Welcome to Home Group. This is Friday night. And tonight we're going to wrap up our teaching called The Love Test. Have you already downloaded the study guide? It's yours for free. Just go to renner.org right now. You can download it. The whole study guide. It is filled with all the Greek words, the points, the principles, the translations from the New Testament Greek about walking in the high level love of God, which is the agape love of God. And this is our gift to you. And we want you to have it. And tonight is the last night that we're offering it on our program. And it comes with a whole series called The Love Test. You can get audio or video. You need to eat it and eat it, devour it, devour it till you really get it down deep inside you. And it also comes with a little book. You know, sometimes people like little books. And can I tell you the truth? Writing a little book is the hardest thing for me to do. Denise, is that the truth? Oh, 100%. It's a sign and a wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll sit down. I'll say, Denise, I'm going to write a small book. She immediately starts laughing because I don't know how to write small books. Even if I think I'm going to write 100 pages, it ends up being 250 pages. It just pours out of me. That's all I know how to say. Anyway, this is a small one. Look at the size of it. But every single page is just filled with teaching about the agape love of God and how to walk in the love of God Please order this, please. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, a partner is anyone who financially, regularly supports our ministry to help us take the teaching of the Bible around the world. And when we call people partners, we really mean they are partners. And partner, I want to say thank you. Thank you for helping us. We can't do it without you, but together we can really do something significant. We can impact a lot of lives, and we are. But if you're not a partner, the moment you become one, we're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. You know why we send you this book? Because it's dedicated to partners. And we're going to send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness, which is very appropriate for what we've been talking about in home group this week. But right now on our website, everything's on discount, and this week it ends. This will be the second week we've offered everything for 25% off just because we wanted to and because we know that you're thinking about Christmas. And what better gift can you give to somebody for Christmas than the teaching of the Bible? That's what all of this is about. You can give them gifts in written form, audio form, visual form. We have so many resources available for you. Joel's got a whole lap full of study guides. Look at these study guides. This is not even all of them. And each series Dad teaches on TV goes along with a study guide. And the study guides are his notes, are the principles, are the Greek words. And you can really dig in deep to many subjects. This one I have right here is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. How to get out of the trap the devil set for you. How, um, this one's the world gone crazy. What the New Testament tells us about demons. Qualifications for leadership. So many, many study guides. And these are all available in our store at a good discount. And we made that available for you. You know Christmas is just around the corner. And if you don't know what to give somebody or you want to give someone, someone something special, like how to get over it or the gift of forgiveness or something like that, you can get those at our store. You know, there's so many wonderful television ministries. I just recently made a list of all the daily TV ministries that are available. What a smorgasbord the body of Christ has, and it's wonderful. But as I've done my research, I can't find another TV ministry, daily TV ministry, that provides a study guide like that for every single thing they teach. I mean, it is amazing what we put into those study guides. Joel? Many of them are 80 pages, 100 pages, 50 pages. These are Dad's notes. He puts a lot of work into these programs because we want to provide teaching you can trust. And how can you trust? Because it's based on the Bible. The Bible should be the foundation of our lives. And that is the truth. We should read our Bibles every single day. And I'm so grateful God sent us that letter. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so committed to reading the Bible in our lives that when I meet with my team and I see my team every day, I ask them every day, did you read your Bible? They ask me, did you read your Bible? And it's really good for us to hold each other accountable because reading the Bible needs to be the number one priority in our lives. But I want to tell you something else you can get right now for 25% off. And this really is amazing. No room for compromise. 
This is Christ's message to today's church. It's based on Revelation chapter 2, the words that Jesus spoke to the church in Pergamum, a church that really was in compromise with the world in Denise <laughs> today. Guess what? Here we are again. The church is in compromise. And there is no room for compromise. And if you understand the words of Jesus in Revelation chapter 2 about compromise, ay, 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 it is really strong what Jesus has to say. Joel? I just wanted to say, you know, we really do read your comments. And we would like you to comment on these videos and like them so more people can see it. You know, the more likes a video gets, the more people see the video. That's why we always ask you to like it. But please comment. We really do read your comments. Dad, I know you read comments every I day. read hundreds of them every week. Mm -hmm. But I want to read something on the back of this book because this book was really prophetic. Yeah. Now, I know that right now everybody feels like the church is in the midst of a storm, and that's true. Listen to what I wrote on the back of this book. A storm is on the horizon. Hmm. Hurricanes consist of multiple belts of rain and wind that pound the earth in sequence with pauses between each violent phase. When the eye of the storm arrives, the sky may appear bright and clear, giving the illusion, the illusion that the storm has passed. But the truth is the fiercest impact of the storm is still approaching. Those who don't know how to read the signs may mistakenly emerge from their place of safety only to face the unprotected full velocity of the storm's brutal fury. My friends, we're living with an approaching storm. But the first century also faced a storm and they survived. Mm -hmm. And this book will really help you have the right attitude to deal with the current climate. What a gift. You know, Rick, the Bible says in, in Revelations chapter, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that we overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And that book, No Room for Compromise, is such a profound uh, description of that those believers they overcame by the blood of the lamb and they overcame by the word of their testimony and that is a testimony and an encouragement to us Amen. and I really I love that book Rick because it, it says that they made it we can make it and you know, not only is it full of revelation, it's full of photos and art. I mean, it's truly a magnificent book. And there's a accompanying book, partner book with it called A Light in Darkness. The back of it says, step into the world of the New Testament as Rick Brenner transports you into the first century. That's what this book does. This is a book that your grandchildren will enjoy. Mm -hmm. You just sit it on the coffee table. I, I'm telling you, we have one of these in our home. People just sit and immediately start flipping through the pages, and they don't want to stop because it is filled with such magnificent illustrations from the first century. And people say, I didn't know that. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. All of it's in this book. And right now, this very significant book is 25% off. And tonight is the last night that we're offering this. It's been such an honor to offer it on our website this week. But let's grab our Bibles. Are you guys ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. And I want us to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to read verse 1 again. And in verse 1, Paul is speaking this beautiful verse that people use in weddings all the time. And as I said earlier, if they had any idea what it really meant, they would never use it in a wedding. But it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. We saw sounding brass is the word which depicted the musical instruments played by pagans, metal instruments that had 10 added to it. So when you banged it, it really had an echo. It was hollow. But those pagans banged and banged and banged and banged and banged. It was part of their religion. They never stopped banging it. 24 hours a day, you could not escape the sound of this sounding brass. It was so aggravating, so annoying. People would just scream, please stop that, stop that, stop that. I remember when I was in college, I had a neighbor who lived in the adjoining apartment. They played the radio so loud. <laughs> Sometimes I would just bang on the wall trying to get them to turn the radio down. Uh, could not escape it. 
Well, that's what this sounding brass describes. Something annoying, aggravating. Ugh, you just want to scream, stop it, stop it now. And a tinkling cymbal. It's such a funny translation because there was nothing tinkling about it at all. It describes the clashing, the nonstop clashing of cymbals used by the Jews before they went into war and it was intended to arouse them to fight. There's nothing beautiful about this at all. That's why if people really knew what it meant, it would not be used in weddings. Mm -hmm. But it's very poetic in the King James. But here's the RIV. Even if I converse fluently in the languages of men and angels, but do not possess love, then it's all nothing more than empty, hollow sounds. People like this who claim to be super spiritual but lack love sound a lot like the nonstop banging and clanging of pagan brass instruments in your city that you wish would stop. Those who go around pretending to be deeply spiritual, but who are sorely deficient in love are so annoying that when you feel trapped in the vicinity near them, you'll begin to look for any way to escape from being trapped with them. And even if they say all the right things, their lack of love makes them as grating on your nerves as the clanging brass instruments that make you want to scream, stop it and stop it now. And let's be honest, these super spiritual motor mouths talk incessantly about how spiritual they are, but their absence of love makes it nothing more than a bunch of verbal hullabaloo. I love that translation. The hyped up spiritual talk of these folks who demonstrate zero love to match their words is so nauseating that it can nearly call your flesh to battle. That's a translation of tinkling symbol to get them just to shut up. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Whenever I read that verse, I think it, in my mind, my translation is, even though you're not, you might know French, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, you might know all these languages and you don't have love, it's like blowing the foghorn <laughs> or, you know, getting a jackhammer out and just drilling, drilling, drilling right above your apartment or someone just incessantly just hitting that, that car wheel horn. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just terrible. You don't care if they know all these languages. If that's, they don't have love. That's true. I think it's very interesting. That's exactly what Paul means. There's something else interesting. He says you can speak in the languages of men and of angels. Angels. angels, which, by the way, is another whole subject. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 6. And let's add on to the love test. He says charity suffers long. We've already seen that. It is kind. We've already seen that. Charity envies not, we've seen that. Vaunts not itself, we've seen that. Is not puffed up, we've seen that. Does not behave itself unseemly, we've seen that. Seeketh not her own, we've seen that. Is not easily provoked, we've seen that. Thinketh no evil, we've seen that. And now we come to rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. The word rejoices here describes a person that is euphoric about something that has happened. He's overjoyed, elated, ecstatic, exhilarated, thrilled, jubilant, just rapturous about something. And the word iniquity rejoices not in iniquity, the Greek word adikia, it describes injustice or something that is bad or something that is wrong. And the RIV would be of the whole verse. <coughs> Love does not feel overjoyed when it sees an injustice done to someone else. Love instead is elated, thrilled, ecstatic, and overjoyed with the truth. Then you come to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. What does the Bible mean when it says love beareth all things? The word beareth is the Greek word stego. Stego. Dole. Stego. Amazing. <laughs> the word stego, listen to this. Here it's translated bear, but listen to what it really means. It means to cover as a roof covers a house. Mm. Mm. That's stego. A better translation would be love covers. Within the word is the concept of protection. Exactly as a roof protects, shields, and guards the inhabitants of a house from exposure. Mm. It describes shielding or guarding others from exposure to guard the inhabitants of a house from the outside bad influences of weather. The roof is designed to shield people from storms, hurricanes, <coughs> tornadoes, rain, hail, snow, wind, blistering hot temperatures, 
and so on. Such protection is vital for survival and prevents people from freezing to death or burning as a result of continual exposure to inclement weather. So here's what it means. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. Love protects, Mm -hmm. shields, guards, covers, conceals, and safeguard people from exposure. What does a lack of love do? A lack of love exposes your sin. A lack of love exposes, it talks about you, it doesn't protect you. It's really ugly. And you know what? I have experienced a lot of love of God from other people. And the love of God is a shield. The love of God is a protection. Mm -hmm. It protects you from exposure to inclement activities. That's what the love of God does. Now, just put yourself in the position that you could be exposed to difficult situations or you could be protected. What would you prefer? You would prefer that somebody step in and cover you. And that's what love does. That's what the Bible means when it says it beareth all things. It really means love covers, love protects, or the RIV is love protects, shields, guards, covers, conceals, and safeguard people from exposure. Isn't that powerful, Denise? It's so powerful. And gossip is absolutely the opposite. Gossip is revealing, killing that person behind their back, saying all kinds of bad things. And and it can even be exposing them. Maybe what they did was true, but it was covered. But when you gossip about it, you uncovered it. And love does not gossip. Mm -hmm. Well, I can hear somebody say, (laughs) yeah, but you don't know what I know about them. Yeah, you just don't know what I know about them. How can I cover them? Well, that leads us to the next statement. Love believeth all things. The word believeth means to put one's faith or trust in something or someone. The tense depicts a constant, continuous trusting of one's faith in something or someone. It pictures, listen to this, a never give up kind of belief that something will turn out okay. Mm -hmm. The phrase could actually be taken to mean that love believes the best in every situation. It does not mean love is blind. Love is not blind. Love chooses to believe the best. In spite of what you know, love believes all things, which means love never gives up. Love says, well, in spite of what I know about that person, I believe they're going to turn around. That's amazing, Denise. Mm-hmm. That's the way love acts. <laughs> I mean, there, there again, you see that love's covering again. Because the devil, you know the meaning of the devil. It's accuser, slanderer, hater. And so he, he might come to our mind and slander that person. But we can turn that off and say, no, I believe the best about that person. And you know what? They didn't know what they were doing when they did that. That's what Jesus said. I forgive them. I cover them. I mean, we have a lot of power. Joel, you know, Mom, sometimes people say, well, they need to get what they deserve. Oh. They need to get what's coming to them. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone like that not long ago, and I thought, you know, God, God will know when to give them what they deserve. And it's not our job to do that. And if we trust God, then he'll just do it at the right time, at the right moment. And we don't have to worry about it. Well, can I say something? Sure. Well, along with what you just said, Joel, because Stephen, in in Acts chapter 7, when they were stoning him, he said, Father, do not charge them with this sin. That was love. That was love covering all those people. Mm -hmm. And the future apostle Paul was in that group. Mm -hmm. And they covering them and protecting them and forgiving them. It's so powerful. You know, something that I think has really saved me is that through the years when somebody has done something bad to us, and we've had things done bad to us, sometimes we've done bad to ourselves, but when somebody has done something foul against us over the years, God has given me the ability to think like this. They're not in their right mind. If they were thinking right, They would have never done that. That's a child of God. The Holy Spirit lives in that person. They obviously are not thinking correctly. 
So they are a victim themselves or they would have never done what they just did. And you know what? It's protected me. Mm-hmm. It's really protected me to believe the best. And when you believe the best about somebody, you're really free of judgment. You're free of offense. It sets you free. It sets you free. Believe the best. In fact, when it says believeth all things, the RIV says, love strains forward with all of its might to believe the very best in every situation. And I've translated strains because sometimes you've got to really put effort into believing the best. But it goes on in verse 7 and says, love hopes all things. Hopes, the Greek word elpidzo, pictures one who places his hope in something and then keeps his hope there. It carries the idea of an unwavering trust and expectation of good things. Mm. The RIV says love always expects and anticipates the best in others and the best for others. Do you like that? Very. Mm. Then it says, love endures all things. That's 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. The word endures, hold on, the Greek word, hupomene. It means to remain in your spot, to keep a position, to resolve, to maintain the territory that you've gained, to defiantly stick it out regardless of the pressures mounted against it. It pictures staying power, hanging their power, It depicts the attitude that holds on, holds out, outlasts, perseveres, hangs in there, never giving up, refusing to surrender to obstacles and turning down every opportunity to quit. One that is under a heavy load, but regardless, refuse to bend, break or surrender, which means this part of 1 Corinthians 13, 7 in the RIV would be translated. Listen to this. Love never quits, never surrenders. And never gives up. Now that, when I look at that, it makes me want to really deal with my heart. Because if I'm tempted to quit, this verse says love never quits, never surrenders, and never gives up. And by the way, this is not a counseling session we're having. I'm just exegeting from the Greek New Testament. The Holy Spirit will deal with you about what you need to do with all of this. Joel? One thing I'm thinking about is, you know, we we need to love the person. Not all deeds are lovable, but people are lovable. That's good, Joel. And we need to hate sin, but love people. That's another way people say it. Mm. And mom, I've heard you say that very many times. And it's the truth. You need to love people. People are lovable. Sometimes I, I hear someone say, I love you. And I think, how can you love that person? But the truth is, you can love people. God loves people. He gave his only begotten son for people. He didn't give, he gave it to save people out of sin. And I think that's very encouraging. Mm. Oh, it is. And, you know, he gave it. For the whole world. So if, if, if we're struggling with somebody, that's somebody that Jesus gave his life for. Mm-hmm. And, and it just puts it in per perspective that mm. this isn't that important. Jesus died for that person. I forgive that person. I refuse to quit. I, I, I refuse to give up. I refuse to believe the worst. I believe the best. And you know, I say, well, that's just stupid. You need to just give up and see what, see what's really going on. Well, not according to God. You know, love is not blind and love is not stupid, but love makes choices. It chooses. makes choices. But that leads us to the next statement. In 1 Corinthians 13, 8, love never fails. Mm. Mm-hmm. Never means never, ever. I love that. Never, ever yeah. fails is a translation of a, it's a form of the Greek word pipto, which means to fall, to collapse, something that disappoints. It really means love never, ever, ever. disappoints. Ever. It never, ever, ever fails. Real love will never let you down. Now, guys, I'm going to read to you the RIV of all of these verses. Are you ready? Okay. We're wrapping it up tonight, so I have to read to you the full RIV of 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. It's a little bit bigger than what you read in the King James Version, but it's so full. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. What color? Love patiently and passionately bears with others for as long as patience is needed and does not easily give up or bow out. Love doesn't demand others to be like itself. Rather, it's so focused on the needs of others that it bends over backwards 
to become what it needs to be for others. Love is not ambitious, self-centered, or so consumed with itself that it never thinks of the needs or desires of others. Love doesn't go around talking about itself all the time, constantly exaggerating and embellishing the facts to make it look more important in the sight of others. Love does not behave in a prideful, arrogant, haughty, superior, snooty, snobbish, or clannish manner. Love is not rude and discourteous. It is not careless or thoughtless, nor does it carry on in a fashion that is insensitive to others. Love does not manipulate situations or scheme and devise methods that will twist situations to its own advantage. Love does not deliberately provoke others by engaging in actions or speaking words that are so sharp they cause an ugly response. Love does not deliberately keep records of wrongs or past mistakes. Love does not feel overjoyed when it sees an injustice done to someone else, but is elated, thrilled, ecstatic, and overjoyed with the truth. Love protects, shields, guards, covers, conceals, and safeguards people from exposure. Love strains forward with all of its might to believe the very best in every situation. Love always expects and anticipates the best in others and for others. Love never quits, never surrenders, and never gives up. Love never disappoints, never fails, and never lets anyone down. That's the RIV of 1 Corinthians 13, 4-8. And this is why I call this the love test. When you read this... You're either going to be encouraged or you're going to be convicted. And you might be encouraged and convicted. You might be doing well in some points and not too well in other points. Don't be judged by it. Just say, Lord, help me to correct. If I need to change, help me to self-correct. Thank you for speaking to my heart. The Holy Spirit will show you what to do with this. I can't tell you what to do with it. I'm not there. I'm not in your relationships. A lot of relationships are pretty complicated. But you know what? Jesus has the key to every situation. And if you listen to the Holy Spirit, He will enable you to step up into high-level love, which is the agape love of God. And I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And you ought to order this whole series called The Love Test. Listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and get this teaching down deep inside you. But hey, we're done, guys. And tonight is the last night we're offering 25% off of everything at our website store. So please grab the opportunity and get some gifts for Christmas. But we'll be back on Monday. And guys, guess what? Next week, we're going to start talking about Christmas. Good. The Christmas story. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to really dive deep and see things that possibly you've never seen before. But go to bed, sleep well. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.